look at comparing functions with coordinate pairs or tables. Okay, so again, make a tab, title it comparing coordinate pair or table, and I'll just video and copy those down. And the cool thing about coordinate pairs, it's really a table. And I wrote them like vertically, so I could just do the table real quick. The first one's your x value, the next one's your y value. So when you're given a coordinate play, pair, sorry, make it a table. So that's what I'm going to do now. Usually they put them side to side, but I put them underneath each other so I can make the table really easy. So that's what we're going to do. They give you coordinate pairs, you're making a table. All right, now once you make that, they might ask you, uh, well, what is it? Is it linear, exponential, or quadratic? Well, linear, remember, we've done this before. The first difference is the constant, given that the change in x is also constant. So your first difference is the constant given that the change in x is constant. Let's look at that. So second number minus first number, 8 minus 4 is going to give me 4. The listening check, color in the whole table. So now instead of just subtracting the next one minus the previous, I'm just going to add 4 to each one and see because it has to change constant, right? And I have to get those numbers. See, I, I get it. Every time I add 4, I get 8, 12, and 16. So that's cool. Once the change in x works out, now I can change, check the change in y. If the change in x doesn't work out, I can't check. So second number minus first number is 3. And if I add 3 every time, do I get these numbers? Yes, I do. So the constant um, change in x and the constant change in y is true. So this is linear because it's the first difference. For exponential, it's the constant y ratio given that the difference in x is also constant. Okay, so same scenario, the second number minus the first number is 1. So if I add 1, do I get the next number? Yes, I do. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So I'm good there. Now I can check the ratio. The ratio is division. 4 divided by 3. The second number divided by the first number is times 2. So if I multiply everything by times 2, will I get the next number? And you can see I do. So on all of these, I multiply by 2. That means it's exponential. If the ratio is the same, it means it's exponential. For quadratic, the second difference is a constant given the change in x is also a constant. So for all of these, anytime you have a table, the change in x has to be constant before you can check it. So second number minus first number is 1. So let's see, 2 plus 1, is that going to give me the next number? Yes, it is. 3 plus 1, 4 plus 1. So it all changes by plus 1. Now this one is the second difference. That means the second number minus the first number is going to give me 15. So it's going to change by 15. Now if it was linear, the next one would also change by 15. If I took 20 and added 15, I would expect 35. But it's not linear, so it's not going to change at a constant rate. So I actually have to do that number minus the previous number. So 80 minus 45, so I'm adding 35 there. 125 minus 80, so I'm adding 45. Now it should change constantly. So I subtract the, and I'm just checking. Sometimes I make mistakes. I just check that that's true. So first difference is 5. Second difference, so second number, 25 minus the first number, 50, which is 10. Now what I'm saying is if this is quadratic, I'm just going to be adding 10 at the time. Let me check. 15 plus 10 is 25. 25 plus 10 is 35. 35 plus 10 is 40. So yes, it's changing by 10 every time. So the second difference is constant. So that's just a quick look. All right, now we're looking at domain and range from a table. Okay, the domain from a table is just whatever your x values are in up in order, and then you don't repeat. So if you have to make it you don't repeat. Close parentheses because you include them. Same thing with the y. It's just all the numbers there in order. So this one's going to be. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's important. Close parentheses because it includes those numbers. This one, negative 6, negative 18, negative 24, negative 162. This is a listening check. Color in the part of the table that has 5 and negative 486. So if you ask to find domain and range from a table, it's the easiest one. Just write down all the x values in order, all the y values for the range. Now, a lot of times what they're going to ask you to do is write the equation. So they'll ask whether it's linear, exponential, quadratic, and then they'll say write the equation. So let's look at the first one. If it's linear, once you say it's linear, it's y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, the change. What is it changing by every time? So x, and then b is the y-intercept. y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. Now, because I don't have where x equals 0, I'm just going to go back one more. 
and because the change is the same, I'll get negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So when x equals 0, y is equal to negative 3. That's the change. And I'm just checking with the calculator just to make sure. Okay, so the plus b part is negative 3. And if you like, you can actually put the equation into the calculator if it's second table and make sure your table matches. All right, for exponential, it's y equals a parentheses b raised to the power of x, where a is your y-intercept, so where x is equal to 0, y is 2. b is how is it changing? This is changing by 2. That's easy. For quadratic, it's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is your second difference divided by 2. So my second difference is 10 divided by 2. Second difference divided by 2. So 10 divided by 2, which is 5. x squared plus, I don't know what bx is, and c is my um, y intercept. So I need to know where x is equal to 0 again. So I need to go back one here. So you want to subtract 10 from 15 to get 5. So 5 plus 10 is equal to 15. And then doing it one more time. So if that's plus 5, it's going to be 5 minus 5 equals 0. So 0 plus 5 is 5. So the y intercept is 0. Okay, so I'm going to simplify that. 10 over 2 should give me 5x squared plus bx. Now, I can find out what bx is, but before I do that, I'm just going to plug in y is 5x squared. Sometimes the b is 0. And you can see my equation is exactly the same as my table. And that means that the b is 0. So this is y equals 5x squared. Most of the time, they won't ask you to find the problem. And that's pretty much it. So let's practice.